Hi, everybody. Let's podcast. What is going on in the world? It's not easy out there. It's terrible. I think I'm watching less news than more news. I'm paying attention less because I'm just trying to get by. Sometimes I wake up in the middle of the night and I think, what am I going to do? What am I going to do? It's not working the way it used to work. I'm not in the flow of how I used to be with, with acting jobs. My favorite is when someone says, you working on anything exciting now? Uh, what could I possibly say that would please you in that moment? Also, I don't really think you're looking for an answer. You just want me to, you're just maybe nervously saying something or you want me to match some excitement that you feel. Oh, the burden of being somewhat recognizable to certain people sometimes, but now being in a completely different position in your life and having to basically start over. I'm going to try to u- learn YouTube. I met with my friend yesterday. We'll see if he if he has me back or not. Um, but anyway, you know, I wake up thinking of how behind I am and will I ever get it done and will I ever achieve anything and it's such a shitty thing to do that to yourself to be in that mindset but not always easy to get out of right sometimes I read positive affirmation books that says just move your body as soon as you get out of bed do five fist pumps in the air sing a black eyed peas song or sing happy by Pharrell I know it sounds terrible But you know what? The times I've done that, it has worked. But sometimes I, and I know I'm in my head and I don't know how to get out of my head. I know I'm beating myself up. I don't know how to stop beating myself up. But we just got to keep facing it until we change. Um, I didn't know you did stand up is a thing I get a lot after performing on a stand up show. Or the reference to the show I was on 24 which is constant, but then not really. But then sometimes, especially when I'm trying to do things that are just me and freelance, that's people, it was, it's a powerful thing when people recognize you from that. Um, and I don't want to be in a position of feeling like I'm behind or that I need to try and get something, you know, I'm enough. Things are okay the way they are at the moment. But I was thinking about that college scandal thing that just broke yesterday about uh, Felicity Huffman and and Laura Lofman who just got indicted for paying way too much or paying, uh, cheating the system, paying for their kids to get into college. And... um, it's very interesting because it's it's not a surprise that people with money use their money to have power over people. I mean, that's our whole political system. That's sort of how we operate as a company, as a company, as a country, not to be like blanket statement generalization because there are a lot of things to unpack, as they say. But I've seen a couple of my friends post about their college life and working their way through it. And even reading on Twitter, you can you can really f- feel that sense of, uh, I worked hard to get where I am, and I scrapped and scrimped and saved, and there's something to that, you know, the haves and the have not have nots. It's a different mentality. Most people I know um, work. And work to be what they want and who they are and to get where they're going. And I've never known anything that's not that. I guess when I was growing up, my parents made me very comfortable and things were okay. But in order to break out of that, it was going against the system of the comfort of my home. I probably could have stayed in Michigan and gotten some minimum wage job and lived nearby my parents and just paid uh, paid my bills and lived day to day. 
But now I'm doing that in Los Angeles. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> oh, and I have been feeling a little bit lately like poor me, like a fall from grace. That isn't really true. It's just different. And I'm having a hard time accepting it because I want to have the same lifestyle as I had before when I hit in acting. It took a while for me to grasp that that was happening. I would say four to five years in and I thought, okay, uh, this is the new me. I can afford to pay bills. I can afford to buy things. This is pretty cool. I can, you know, be an actor for a living on a show that people like. And I really didn't think that was going to end. And here I am way after the fact, trying to get something going, trying to feel that, um, not even uh, wealthy, but just secure, you know, that everything's going to be okay. Is it weird that my acupuncturist told me yesterday, you got this, you know, because they, <laughs> they look at your tongue and feel your pulse. And um, it's weird because it's sort of personal, but not personal. Like he'll ask you if there's any stress in your life. And I'm like, I don't know. I mean, yeah. And it wasn't until right before I left the sesh, I said, um, yeah, I'm just uh, really worried about running out of money. He's like, okay, um, I'd like to see you next week, please. I know. It's like hashtag white people problems. I can hear my mom's voice going, oh, acupuncturist, what is that? That is hoity-toity. But, you know, it's something I can do to try to calm myself down and be in my body and I'm going to do it. I think it's helpful. I went there originally because my back was hurting. So that's helped. But now there's just like a tightness everywhere of holding on to anxiety, which is a borderline panic that, um, I'm not going to be able to pay my bills, but it seems silly now that I'm saying it out loud right now. I don't mean to be like such a bummer or like complaining, but it's like, this is what, this is what happens. This is what we go through. I mean, I'm very lucky. I get to be a creative person. I guess I, um, I don't know. In some ways I set the bar pretty high because I want to maintain a version of what I've already established. And I feel like I'm like a legitimate creative person out in the world with something to say and something to express. Um, but it's tough to, ha- go, you know, be, be able to go through that creative process. You need to feel a certain amount of freedom and safety. And it's hard to do that when you're worried about your bills. Um, but I'm in a good position. We're all good. I'm sure I've talked about this before, but, you know, downsized, but still a lot of bills to pay, but I'm at a good place. I think I'm mostly scared of just the next chapter of my life. Does anybody out there have that? What's your version of a big change that you went through or, or the stuff that you did up into a certain point and had a lot of success with wasn't working for you anymore and you had to make a change. And do you remember the steps that it took to make those changes? I'd love to hear um, other people's stories about that. So anyway, I was uh, on my way to the acupuncturist after having been turned down for an audition. I'm being told um, through an email. It sounds like I'm totally complaining, but I want to talk about real stuff. I think it's, um, I think it's where the where the juice is at. You know, where the where the meat's fallen off to the bone, so you can get at it and and move forward. And for me, I've always waited for the people to give me a job in terms of acting. It's like a weird, um, almost like Hollywood is like the big mommy and daddy, and they're going to tell me if they like me and if I'm good enough, and they're going to give me a a paying job. See, this is important that I'm talking about this because it's kind of digging in and unearthing, and it's scary because I want to be, my ego wants to say, look, I've been doing this a long time, and I'm this age and at this point in my life and I'm responsible and I'm really good like what's the problem why don't I have anything not anything to show for why don't I have stability right now 
why don't I have a comfort level? You know, my ego is not happy about this is an important conversation. So I don't, I don't think I'm complaining. I think this, I think that everybody goes through their own version of this, um, at different times. So, oh, I got this email regarding an audition, feedback from an audition in all capital letters. They loved you for this part. Here's the thing, okay? Hear me clearly. That's fantastic. It's nice that I'm in the ring for it. I get that. I'm appreciative of it. But also, what followed that was, so they need to cast these other parts and hopefully, fingers crossed, if they come back around to it and they get all the other people hired, then if they still can go Caucasian on this part, then I think you really have a chance. It's like, what, what kind of backhanded messaging is that? You know, starting to think my manager is some sort of a, you know, bad news broker, a do love disappointment, like a backhanded, uh, codependent confidant, where it's like, did you, can you hear that? That's the cat standing on his hind legs, opening the door. Hang on. Because what kind of a person gives that message of, I genuinely want you to know they love you so much. And that in itself is positive. Like I'm saying, I'm just trying to break it down here. But on the other hand, it's like, well, how about just hire me? You know, like why... Why is that healthy for me to hear the positive feedback? All that does is put me in this sort of, you know, I'm thinking of those balls that hit each other and go pink, pink, like that inertia. What's that? What's the word I'm looking for? I'm in this like stasis, this place where I'm neither there and I'm not behind. I'm sort of in this hoping, oh, okay, well, let, let's hold on to that shred of hope. It's like, why? So I put it out there and put it in your, um, in your ballpark to maybe be an option for you. It's just such a weird messed up. Oh, great. Oh, great. They liked me. Let, Let me hope they get back. It's like, if someone loves you in all caps, wouldn't they just tire you? Like, what kind of a love relationship is that? It's like I'm some kind of t- toss away uh, street whore. Yeah, you know, we love you, but just continue hanging out on the street for a while. All right, this is very distracting. The cat is looking for a place to put his butt now. But as I was trying to finish that thought, he was back and forth in front of me on the laptop. And you wouldn't even know it. That's what a pro I am. Okay, he just jumped up on a cat shelf behind me. There are cat shelves all over our house, by the way. So on my way to acupuncture, I... I was feeling a little bit down and... I was five minutes early, and where I parked, I had walked past a Petco, and had a big sign, and it said, adoptions here, and I was like, oh, I immediately got this rush of good feeling, I was like, I'm gonna go look at some dogs, I mean, not adopt one, but just look at some dogs, and I thought, oh, that's wrong, because you're supposed to rescue dogs, You, you cannot support a pet store right now, and I was like, well, but if they have them in there, I can look at them. They're puppies. I can entertain the idea that I might get one. And so I got really excited. I mean, this is messed up in itself. This is like a little reward in my brain. There's a store that has a living thing in it, a little fur ball that I'm going to march into, a little fur ball in a cage, a little life that I'm going to go touch to make myself feel better. We human beings are strange. So is commerce and capitalism and our society. I blame our society as a whole. Anyway, I go in there and 
first of all, there's no dog adoptions. But as soon as I don't know that, I walk I walk in the door and um, immediately this woman makes a beeline for me, like Carrie at the prom, and she's got her hands at her sides and she's looking at me and she said, "Hey, how's your cat?" And I was like, "What the? This is an employee at Petco." And I was trying to quickly put it together. Where do I know her from? Oh, she used to work at the other pet store. I said, oh, you're from uh, Sentinella Pet Supplies. You used to work there. And she said, yeah, I did until they fired me without any reason. Super quickly, one day, they just fired me out of the blue. I was like, ew. Okay, cool. Glad to be talking to you. I just I just thought of how I've been talking on this podcast about like I don't have any job or any meaning in life like if I just I guess I'm doing that on the podcast right now but someone approaches you and they just drop on you some information where they're the victim and they want you to write I mean they just let me go I mean I almost should have just said well what happened to just really get the story for pure entertainment but it's so scary because then you're locked into that person right what am I afraid of just standing there for 20 minutes I guess and being uh have her take my life energy by telling me some sob story and then making me feel like I need to be on her side which the way she gave the information she sounded a little bit crazy you know I was on the side what I immediately thought was well, they probably had some reason because you seem a little bit bonkers the way you're even recounting the story to me who you don't even know. I mean, there's a little bit of pride, I guess. Like, that's why you don't see me there anymore because they just fired me. But anyone who's like, yeah, they did this to me for no reason. Yeah, there's probably a reason. Just you saying that equals there's a reason. So anyway, she says, uh, how's your cat? It's been like four years. And I think it's been three years, but still that's a long ass time to remember it. She remembered me. And she's, and I said, he's good. He's a lot bigger now. And she said, yeah, he was little. He was little last time we saw each other. He sure was. It was a few years ago. And then she says, oh, my Sydney's doing good. He's doing great. We think he's a 100% tabby, like it's some exotic thing. She's like, we're pretty sure he's 100% tabby. I'm like, okay, great. And then she goes on to pull out pictures of her cat. The first one is him lying there. She's like, oh, look, look at him. Isn't he beautiful? I'm like, he really is. Now, to be fair, I love a picture of a pet or a baby. I have no problem. I think that pets are a great thing to love. And they're, I think they give a lot of, um, um, you know, they need to be nurtured and they nurture us. I think it's a nice thing to have in your life to show love and to give love to a pet, I think is a wonderful thing. And I think having those exchanges with people is lovely, but there's a line. And when someone starts talking about your pet, you also get information about them. And she had already given a red flag. And so she's showing me pictures and talking about him in this way that was a little bit too much, you know, like the adoration of him. And I was expected to go there within the conversation. Oh yeah, he's really beautiful. And then the next picture, he's like on top of this um, cat carpet uh, scratching post. And he's just sitting there. And it's just a normal photo of a cat looking like a cat, like any regular cat. And she's like, oh, look at him. That is so Sydney. (laughs) Look at him right there. He's just looking down, thinking of his next move, looking, you know, across his kingdom, collecting his thoughts. He's still angry with me for keeping the laundry room off limits. I'm like, I'm sorry, Sydney, you can't go there. He told me with his eyes, look, look at his eyes. Can't you see? He's looking at me. He's, he's going, I won't do it anymore, mom. And I told him, I said, I'm not so sure about that, Sydney. And I didn't know what to say. She had this whole world and thought it was so unique and I and to me I just saw a regular cat sitting on a pole so I just looked at her and I nodded and I was like yeah that is so Sydney she's like I know right is that so Sydney 
And I said, yeah, well, I have an appointment, but it's so nice to see you. And then she told me her schedule. I said, oh, yeah, great. I'll have to stop back in here. And, you know, I thought I was going to tell this story and and go, man, she's nuts. I'm going to avoid that place at all costs. But now, you know, I don't know. Maybe I'm going to stop back in there and just really hear about Sydney and what he's up to. And, you know, she had, of course, uh, stuff to tell me about our cat. Well, they can be like dogs sometimes and they can chase things. And I'm like, oh, I know. She's like, you have the Savannah, right? And I'm like, yeah, we do. And I'm, and I tell, I tell her, you know, I'm not, I'm not a cat person. That's me. That's me talking. Cause it, cause it truly, it was my husband's cat. And so I told her I am not a cat person, but guess who is the cat's favorite now? Of course me, he follows me everywhere. So I don't know. I mean, maybe, maybe I need to have these conversations. This might be one of the healthiest, uh, healthiest friendships of my life. I can just go visit Chrissy in the Petco. She can tell me about her cat and I can tell her about mine. So uh, I think it could be the start of something good. Well, thanks for checking in. I would love to hear from you and hear, um, you know, at this point, tell me about your cat and your relationship and how close is it in your life. And then also I'd like to hear about any uh, transitions in your life where you felt really low and needed to make some changes and how did you change and break from the past and make positive steps and not get buried by your own fears. Big stuff. We well, can go either way. You can have an easy cat conversation or, or I would love to um, get some feedback and hear your stories. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Bye.